do you create a cash flow forecast using the Jamie Cunningham cash flow forecasting tool? So firstly, just to discuss a little bit of the theory here, the whole purpose of creating a cash flow forecast is to be able to predict, predict the money in your bank account where as it comes in and goes out and when you might be coming up for a cash squeeze or when you might have some excess cash that you can invest elsewhere uh, or if you've got some large expenses that you're looking to incur, maybe buying some, some capital equipment or reinvesting in more inventory or bringing on a new employee. The cash flow tool allows you to plug in those numbers and, and see what effect it's going to have on cash flow. So let's take a look at it. Um, there is a, there's three tabs. There's the instructions tab, which obviously has the instructions on it. There is a sales tab for recording uh, operating income coming in and the cash flow tab. Now, the template is set up in a pretty generic sense uh, to start with. So our starting point is to actually format it so it matches and is a fit for our business and for the right time frame, obviously. The base template is in a weekly format. So you can see up the top here, we've got week one, week two, week three, and week four. Uh, if you, you know, it depends on the frequency of these periods where this frequency is, is weekly. The frequency here depends on how tight your cash flow is. The more uh, the more buffer you have in terms of cash, like the more cash you have in your account, the less frequent or the less tight you really need to run your cash flow forecast. And also the the more frequent the period, such as if it's weekly versus monthly, there's more work involved in updating it and keeping it maintained. Now the benefit of doing it weekly is that you can run your cash flow a lot tighter i.e. have less of a cash buffer in your account. And if you're a small business, that's quite often the way you have to run, so doing it weekly is necessary. I've also flipped in my businesses between doing it monthly and doing it weekly, depending on on how tight how tight things are at the time. Anyway, so first thing is to, to put our, our time frame in, and uh, I'm recording this while well, it's the end of 2013, but let's say it was going to be the start of 2014, so we put that date in there. And so our dates roll forward. Now, important to know the dates here on the cash flow tab also sync up with the dates on the sales tab. So you don't need to go and change these. They actually have formulas in them. So we just edit the dates on the cash flow tab. Now, there's two parts to uh, the flow of cash. There's cash in, which is up the top here, and there's cash out. Cash in, there's three ways you get cash into your organization. One is through uh, sales, or more accurately, collection of sales, uh, when people actually pay you money, customers pay you money. Uh, you can get money in if you sell some assets. So say you had um, say you had some excess computers lying around and you decided to sell those, you would get money for them, and that would be cash coming in. It wouldn't be through operations in terms of sales or revenue, so we call that investing uh cash in or investing cash flow, sale of assets. And the last one is if you were to borrow money, either from yourself or through a, a, a third party, a bank or a private lender, that would be cash into the business too. And we like to separate each of those out just so we can see where our cash is actually coming from. You don't have to do that. You can put it all in one line if you want. Just the best way to do it is to separate it out into three different categories because uh, that will also match up with the cash statement uh, that you can generate from your financial software. Now that's the cash in and the cash out side. We've got the same same breakout. You've got operating cash, which there's quite a few categories here. We've got any inventory uh, type expenses here or payments that go out and then your regular operating expenses. We've got a few base ones in the template here, but the benefit of doing it in Excel is that you can adjust this as you see fit. If you've got 20 suppliers, well we just need to put some extra lines in here and, uh, and off we go and we can we can make that happen, All right? Oh, yeah, you can you can change that to be suitable for you. I'm not going to do it for the purpose of this. Okay, so that's and the way we we manage this is looking at your your chart of accounts on uh, your income statement. If you print off your income statement from your financials, you're going to want um, certainly these operating expenses to kind of match uh, what is on your income statement there. It's also taking into account your bank statement and how things are reflected on that. 
So if, for instance, you were to pay a lot of your minor expenses uh, by credit card, you only need to have your credit card on here. So I've got Visa here. And you would put all of those expenses, I mean, you're only going to pay your visa once a month, uh, probably. So lumping all those things into one category is all you need to do for the cash flow forecast because you're just recording when cash goes in or cash comes out. So you've got to look at how you're actually paying for things. If you're writing a lot of checks, then you might need to have um, different lines here. Let's say you were to pay uh, your phone bill by check, you would put phone in here. And, but let's say you pay your internet uh, bill on your Visa card, you don't need to write internet in here because that's all going to fall under the Visa. Likewise with payroll, you can lump all that into one category, you don't need to have a separate line for each employee. Uh, and likewise with your suppliers, um, if you pay them individually, uh, you would need to have a listing up here more than likely, but if you paid some by credit card, you could put that, uh, it would all fall under that visa line. So you need to put the enough categories down here that clearly represent how the money comes out of your account. So when you look at your bank account, your bank statement, you can see the entries in there and where they're going to match up or where you're going to input them on, uh, on the cash out section here of your cash flow. So that's the operating side. And then we've also got, just like in the, the cash inside, we've got purchase of assets. So if you buy something, that's cash coming out of your account. And likewise, if you repay borrowings or SH withdrawal stands for shareholder withdrawal. So this would be like if you've got if you've got an owner's draw that comes out, you don't actually pay yourself a wage, but you, you pull some cash out every month or every couple of weeks uh, and that gets accrued on your balance sheet. We, you need to record that as a cash flow activity as well. So we need a line for that. So that's the first part is getting these categories here set up to represent your business. Now, just coming back to the sales side for a second, the sales operations, you can see there's a, uh, there's a formula in here which comes from the sales tab. Because it can be quite chaotic if we try and record all of our sales coming in, there's a separate tab here where you can list out your specific customers, which can work if you've got a manageable amount of customers. But if you've like got thousands of customers, you're not going to uh, list each of the one out there individually and, and put a number in, in each of the lines to represent when a customer is going to pay you. If you have thousands of customers uh, that are paying you um, f different uh, frequencies, you're probably just going to go with one line here. And we're going to walk through at a later time on how to forecast that in your business. But for the purpose of, uh, of getting set up, know that you can either put a lump sum number in here for sales or you can actually use the sales tab and put individual customer. And you'll notice when you put a uh, value in there, let's say that customer is going to give you $2,000, that one $500, this one $40. You'll see it actually totals up here at the bottom to give you a, a sum there and that sum rolls forward into the, the cash flow tool. So the actual forecast. Now, okay, so we've got our categories mapped out here. Now the next step is to update our bank account. So the goal, the way it works is the beginning in the beginning cash line should represent what your bank account says at the beginning of this week. So this is a forecast because I'm in December 2013 right now and this is representing the start of January. So this is going to be a forecast but what uh, you'll see in the instructions tab is it actually recommends starting off by doing a historical summary of your cash flow. That can be very beneficial particularly if it's the first time you've done this doing a historical cash flow analysis. And all that means is taking your bank account uh, for the last couple of months, two or three months, and actually inputting the numbers um, as, it, as they fell on your, your bank statement and as they, they happened over time. So let's say I was going to do that today and I want to do it from the 1st of October, uh, 1st of the 10, uh, 2013. I'll put that in there. So now I've got October right through to... Uh, and you'll see the timing on this goes right uh, forward for at least six months, more like nine months. Okay, so now I would say, let's say at the beginning of October, my cash balance, let's say it was $4,000, as my bank statement says. Uh, and that's the main one we need to put in, is that beginning balance. And then I would go through and I'd have a look at what happened in that first week of October. Now let's say in that first week of October, I had 
500 came in, a 10,000 came in. I'm just going to plug some numbers in here that are obviously fictitious, but give you an idea of how this is going to work. Plugging more numbers in. Like that's, that gives us a sense of uh, some revenue coming in. So we can see here how much revenue comes in each week. Now obviously we've got some expenses. So let's say this supply we had to pay 5,000 that month, 5,000 this guy. And let's say this guy was a $10,000 bill here. Okay, so we can see those numbers are coming down and totaling the cash out here. And let's put the rest of it, say rent was here. Say payroll was here. And let's say that was four. Four thousand, and that happens uh, every. Let's say it's two thousand, and that happens every couple of weeks. I'll just do that. I'm just going to roll that forward. Actually, I'll just go to here because that's all I'm doing. Clear contents there. Okay. Uh, let's say we had phone bill of five hundred. Payroll liabilities, that's our uh, submission to the government. So it was a thousand. And let's say we had a visa bill of four thousand dollars that happened here. Right, there's a real simple uh, forecast or historical analysis. So you can see in this business, they never really got into trouble over uh, what are we covering? One month here, you know, first of October through. But that's what you want to do. You want to go through and you want to input exactly as the, the numbers reflect on your bank account. So you can see that at the end of the week of October 1st in this business, they started with $4,000 in their account and ended with nine. Now, obviously, these are nice round numbers. I'm just using for the example. Yours are not going to be, be that clean. They had a $5,000 gain that um, that month, uh, sorry, that week. The next week, uh, they only had two and a half, two thousand five hundred and forty come in in cash and they spent 7,000 in cash, so it went back down again. You can see the ups and downs. Now here's where it becomes beneficial. Once you've done your forecast, uh, sorry, your historical, for two to three months, you're gonna to start to see trends, particularly in your, your fixed expenses. You'll be able to forecast those out pretty predictably. Like rent, we've got here happening the second week of the month, so we know that's gonna happen going forward. So that's probably gonna be that week. Uh, second week of December is going to be there and we just copy that out and roll that forward second week of January there and so on you just keep rolling that forward like that okay and then same with payroll so we know that's every two weeks so copy paste 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 and so on uh, visa bill you can look back over your visa bills or your credit cards over the last several months and look and see what the average is and you can also look to see what makes them up, makes is uh, is composed in there, and see what the anomalies are, and start to predict. Okay, each month that is generally about five thousand dollars. So you'll you'll throw that in. It gets paid in the last of the month. I tend to when I'm making estimations like that, I tend to go a little bit high. Better to have a higher number in there and then it come in lower, than uh, put a lower number in and get a surprise once it comes in. Uh, your GST number, again, that's going to be based on your sales and your expense uh, numbers. So the best way to forecast this stuff is to have a look at what it's been historically and use those numbers to, to predict the future. Of course, assuming that you think things are going to stay about the same, if something like GST, if you know you're going to have, if you're forecasting an increase in sales, then obviously you're going to see an increase in GST submission as well. So make sure that's reflected in your, your forecast. But just to show you the benefit of this, so and we do the same thing with sales. So sales can be harder to predict, but this comes back to your planning and how you uh, are forecasting your sales. And if you're not doing any proactive marketing at this stage, then you would predict a, a, a business as usual. So you take the historical numbers and use those as a guide for future. Again, go on the conservative side for sales. Better to forecast less money coming in. Uh, then you know, look on the rosy side of things, but then be disappointed when, when you underperform. 
Remember, this tool is about giving you a guide as to what your account balance is going to be in the future and seeing where there might be some problems. If you pad this on the positive side, like you've got more money coming in and less expenses going out, um, sort of you, you're looking on the optimistic side, then you're going to set yourself up uh, for some surprises down the road potentially. Much better to be conservative, lower revenue and higher expenses. Not dramatically, but just uh, just a little bit of padding there. So that you're looking at hopefully a worst case scenario and then when numbers come in, hopefully they come in a little better and uh, you'll, be, you'll be well positioned. If you don't do that, then you might be thinking you're looking okay and then always firefighting or playing catch up. So let's say, I'm not gonna go through and put all the numbers in this one, I'm just gonna do it straight in the line here. If we look at the average here, for those weeks, our average has been 6,240, and I'm just gonna use that as 6,240 as my, my guide moving forward. So we can run that forward as far as we want. And again, with your business, you wanna look at the trends. I mean, do you have uh, more cash coming in at the beginning of the month or the end of the month? How can you best predict that cash coming in is, is found out by looking historically? And then asking yourself the question, what is look what is going to change in the future? Should it be the same, or is there a reason it might be different? And uh, use your answers to those questions combined with your history to give you a best guess moving forward. So now, if we were to look at this business here, we can see that you know what they've got a nice positive cash flow coming in. But uh, let's make it a little more realistic. And where do our suppliers go here? So let's say okay, they're back here. Okay, let's say we had a $20,000 bill come in here. And let's say they were gearing up for some big sales. What's our cash position? Okay, so you can see cash position here. Here's a great example. So cash position here has gone from seven and a half to $12,000. Now let's say, let's say this was our forecast and we, we knew we had that, we, did, that we want to place an order and we know it's going to be payable right there. We can see uh, that's, that's a problem. Uh, now, I do have more cash coming in down the road, so what we can say is we can talk to our supplier and say, listen, can we take two deliveries? I want to take half here, and then I want to take the other half in three weeks' time. Now, let's have a look at our cash, cash position. Much better. Okay, we're only two grand uh, down here, and now two grand down here, so that's much better. So then we can have a look and say, okay, potentially look at receivables, and we might have a look at some, uh, some clients that are, are owing us some money and that could be a way to get it in, or we might be able to say, okay, we can't pay the whole visa bill off here. We're gonna to have to pay half of that and carry a little bit of interest and pay the other half here. How does that look? Okay, that's pretty good. I'm only $60 in the hole now. Maybe you've got an overdraft that, that can cover that. But you can see how this enables you to play around with where you're paying for things, and you can see very accurately what the impact on your cash flow is gonna be. And we can see down here, oh, we're gonna hit the negative again here. So we'll do the same thing with our, our visa. We'll pay we'll pay two thousand off here, and we'll pay another three thousand off here. Okay, now that's a good position. And then let's say you were looking to do a um, say education is one of your components here. You got a course or a program that you want to do, and it was a two thousand dollar course. And so you can look and say, okay, where where can we do that? Well, we've got some negatives here. We've got a negative there. We drop down to six sixty here. Uh, but then we're pretty cash positive here, so you know I can afford to pay for that course starting then. So you can plug that one in, and you can say, okay, I can manage that. Given the assumptions that I've presented on the sheet here of our cash out and our cash coming in, I can afford to do that. Or if you're looking to buy some equipment, say you need to buy a couple of computers or a new piece of machinery, you can do the same thing. Or let's say you need to buy a $10,000 piece of machinery, and you're thinking, okay, well, there's... I really need that machinery now, but I, I can't, I haven't got cash for it, so I'm gonna have to lease it or get a loan for it. So you might then say, okay, I need uh, I need $10,000 in a loan here. $10,000 in a loan. Okay, now I can, I can buy that $10,000 piece of machinery. Like that, okay? And then maybe you've got a, uh, a monthly repayment. Oops, that's 100,000, 10,000, that's better. And then maybe now we've got a monthly repayment that kicks in of, uh, let's say it was a $300 payment. It kicks in every month. 
and you would carry that forward for the uh, for the term of the loan. So, I mean, there can be a bit of work in terms of putting all this together, but you'll find once you've done your your historical numbers uh, from your bank statements, so you can start to see some trends, and then you've got the base numbers in for a forecast, then you can be in a position where it really only takes, you know, well, maybe the start, maybe it takes you an hour a week to look at it and fine tune it, or even your bookkeeper to do. Maybe the start even takes you a couple of hours each week until you start to get really comfortable with it. In time, I can tell you, you'll be down to half an hour a week or even 15 minutes a week of fine tuning. Even better, you do get it um, delegated off to your bookkeeper or someone else in your business and you can train them how to do it and you're just looking at it and monitoring it, in which case it takes you a lot less time. But the power of this is in knowing, okay, if I today, let's say this was this column was today, I can see that so let's say this column is today, and this is my forecast, and I can see, look, as long as nothing changes, my worst case scenario is $60 into my overdraft, but I just gotta watch and make sure things happen the way I forecast them. And uh, if things change, then I come back and let's say, uh, let's say your landlord came to you and said, okay, we've gotta increase your rent by $500. You could say, not next month, Mr. Landlord, I can't afford that, but the month after, that's okay. All right, or defer it for a month because you know, okay, I haven't got that much overdraft. I need to defer that. Just enables you to make some better decisions and uh, be able to sleep at night so that you can you know you got cash in the bank. So have fun with it. It is uh, it is a little bit of work to set up, but hugely rewarding once it's in place.